My name's Caitlin Prince and today I'm talking to you about my research into the emotional reactions non-Aboriginal health professionals have when they reflect on concepts of racism and white privilege during their work in remote Aboriginal communities. I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from Ghana country and that many different First Nations contributed to this research by being the countries in which my participants were working and living and recording their interviews from. And I also want to acknowledge Madu people. I was living on their country when I did a lot of this research, and they're also the group I've worked the most with and have highly influenced the way I think and work. This research was my master's by research through the professional studies course at the University of Southern Queensland. And I was supervised by Dr. Jacinta Maxwell, Professor Marcus Harms and Professor Steve Larkin. I did this research because I was observing really strong emotional reactions in myself, in my colleagues and in students that came to work in remote Aboriginal communities. And I remember looking around at these strong reactions of anger, defensiveness, anxiety, shame and guilt, and wondering how we support one another to move through those emotions and not detract from the work we're there to do. I went to the literature and discovered that there was research into the emotional reactions students have in classrooms in universities where racism or decolonisation is talked about, but there was very little research into this happening in the workplace or how to support people. So after a really extensive literature review, I interviewed 11 health professionals working in remote Aboriginal communities, and they all discussed what they called overwhelming emotions that came up in the course of their work as they grappled with realities around racism and the impact of colonisation. They discussed wanting to minimise race, feeling really overwhelmed and hazy and checking out of it all. They talked about feeling defensive and bristling and thinking things like, I'm trying here, I'm a good person, how can you call me a racist? They talked about realising that they had inherited fear from the stories that they had grown up with and then noticed this in Aboriginal communities with things like wanting to cross the road when they saw an Aboriginal person. They talked about feeling really nervous about getting it wrong, about reflecting on issues of racism and colonisation for fear of appearing racist or realising they were in fact racist. Some of them talked about going into hyperdrive, rushing to fix what they suddenly realised was massive problems caused by racism and colonisation. Some described overwhelming feelings of shame, um, lots of tears, and a growing tension between themselves and their workplaces, their families, their communities back at home outside of the Aboriginal communities, their white communities, as they began to see things differently and through the perspectives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. My research also unpacks the ways in which repressed racial disgust can show up in some forms of care, including distancing behaviours, power imbalance, or exoticising and sentimentalising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders so we only have to engage with the imaginary version of them. I wanted my research to normalise the emotions that come up when non-Aboriginal people reflect on these issues of racism and colonisation. If we don't normalise it and map it, we can't work out how to manage their impact in healthcare, support staff to have productive responses and to move through these, these issues with appropriate support. Um, this is all part of developing the racial resilience we require to engage in anti-racism and decolonisation in healthcare. It was really beyond the scope of my research to look at how we support staff, but in my article you can read some suggestions that participants and literature came up with. Well, the one thing that's really missing from my research, because it was beyond the scope of a master's level solo researcher, is the perspectives of Aboriginal people. And future research really needs to unpack how Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders experience these emotional reactions and the impact it has on the healthcare they receive. So I hope you enjoy reading my research and please get in touch.